We're breaking down the Buffalo Bills Day 3 2024 draft picks today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate you all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Well, folks, welcome in. The Buffalo Bills made seven draft picks on day three of the 2024 NFL draft. And on this episode, we are going to cover the first three of those. So we're going to talk Ray Davis, Cedric Van Pran Granger, and Edifuan Ulafosio on this episode. And then there's also an episode that's available to you right now that covers Javon Solomon, Tylen Grable, Daquan Hardy, and Travis Clayton. So a lot of draft picks couldn't fit it all into one episode, so two episodes to cover the day three picks, and this one covers the first three. So let's dive into these players and tell you what I think about the picks, what they bring to the table, all that type of stuff. So the Bills opened the fourth round of the 2024 NFL draft by selecting Ray Davis, a running back out of Kentucky. Ray Davis is 24 years old. He turns 25 in November. Now, let me pause there because the Bills have drafted a fair amount of older prospects in this draft. Not, not unlike last year. You know, they, they drafted some older players last year. This is just kind of the current state of college football where you have the COVID year and every player was granted an extra year of eligibility uh, due to the COVID year. And you have NIL, name, image, likeness, where players are getting paid a, a good amount of money in the college ranks. And so for some of these guys, they're going to be mid-round picks. They can get a guaranteed half million bucks, even more, in NIL deal deals to stay in college as opposed to going to the NFL, where there's a good chance that as a mid to late round pick, that's not what's going to be guaranteed for them in their contract as a rookie. So just keep that in mind as you navigate this draft class and start to think to yourself, man, the Bills drafted a lot of older prospects. Well, that's just kind of the state of things right now. It'll start to normalize once uh, the extra years of eligibility don't exist anymore for the COVID years and as the NIL situation normalizes a bit as well. So Ray Davis, older prospect, 24, turns 25 in November. He's a native of San Francisco, California, has a really interesting backstory, uh, was one of 14 children, and his parents were in and out of prison. He spent his childhood with different family members, was even homeless at times as a young child, and sports for him were his escape. He played basketball, he played football, and actually one of his teammates' parents on his basketball team uh, at one point became his legal guardian's. And then when Ray turned 16, his dad got out of prison and they reestablished their relationship. So Ray Davis played running back. He played quarterback and safety in high school. He also ran track, played baseball and basketball, was a three-star recruit, and he went to Temple originally. And he led Temple in rushing for two seasons. And then he transferred to Vanderbilt, gave him an opportunity to play in the SEC. And his first season at Vanderbilt had a turf toe injury that limited him to three games. Then he came back the following year and led Vanderbilt in rushing. And then he transferred to Kentucky for 2023, 
and he led them in rushing. So uh, Ray Davis can say that he led three different programs in rushing yards. I'm not sure there's a lot of guys that can say they've done that. So for Ray Davis's career, 44 games, 38 starts, a lot of opportunity, 746 career carries, over 3,600 yards, 4.9 yards per carry, 29 touchdowns for his career, also 94 catches for 762 yards and 12 receiving touchdowns. His best season, though, came in 2023 at Kentucky, where he went over 1,100 yards, 14 rushing touchdowns, averaged 5.7 yards per carry, 3.8 yards per carry after contact, also had seven receiving touchdowns. He is five foot eight, 211 pounds, ran a 4.52 40 yard dash. So when looking at his strengths as a player, I think he does provide the Bills with a powerful runner between the tackles, a dense build, good contact balance, low center of gravity, kind of a squatty build, and that helps him sustain himself through contact. I think that he does have good vision, kind of natural instincts as a runner. I think his body composition helps him to be elusive and, like I mentioned already, kind of staying low to the ground. He can get a decent amount of width uh, because he's very coordinated as a runner. I think when you consider Ray Davis, you just look at him play and you say there's baseline levels of skill across the board. He's actually a very talented pass catcher as well. So checks a lot of boxes. Now, when it comes to growth areas and maybe things that are missing from his skill set, this is what it comes down to. I don't know that he has any real weaknesses. Maybe you wish he was younger and that he didn't have as many touches in college, right? Well over 800 career touches in college. So he comes into the NFL with plenty of mileage. Um, But I think what it really comes down to for me with Ray Davis is I'm not sure he's above average in any category, just really solid across the board. And for me, if you looked at my draft board, I didn't have a high grade on Ray Davis. And that's because for me, I don't grade ordinary running backs very high. I thought he was just a good college running back that was an older prospect that didn't necessarily have any plus traits. Now, maybe you could say his power balance vision combination is is an above average trait. But I think just when you put it in a vacuum, it's all just really average to me. And so being mindful of running backs, I just, that just doesn't move the needle for me. So I think he's a high floor player for the Buffalo Bills. You can see a very clear path to a role. But if you're wondering maybe, all right, well, Joe, I looked at your board. I saw you had a late round grade on him. What's the deal? That's the deal. My personal preference is if I'm going to grade a running back, you know, top four rounds, I want to see some above average skill in some capacity, not a player that I think is, hey, good college running back, probably be a fine pro. That's just not something that I personally put a high valuation on. So my general thoughts on the pick, like I mentioned already, there's a very clear path to the role uh, on this team. I mean, James Cook, Ty Johnson, that's it when it comes to running backs. I know Darrington Evans is around, but I mean, that guy's been bouncing on and off practice squads for the last several years. I'm not expecting much there. You you see Ray Davis is a fourth round pick. He's going to come in and compliment Ty Johnson and James Cook. I think he is the type of back that I believe the Bills needed. Power between the tackles and also can catch the ball a little bit. But I, you also are mindful of, all right, the reality here is after a four-year rookie contract, he's going to be entering his age 29 season at the end of his rookie contract. And so for me, I would have preferred some more upside, but I certainly understand the fit and I can I can respect that there's a just a, a high floor with him where you feel like you kind of know what you're going to get, uh, but I'm not sure there's a whole lot of ceiling for him. I think he'll be a serviceable depth running back for the Buffalo Bills. All right, we're going to talk about Cedric Van Pran Granger on the other side of it. Might be my favorite pick that the Bills made in this draft, so be sure to stick with me. Folks, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find as many quality professionals that are right for the role as possible. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. 
In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't even visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. And look, LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats right now and might not have the time or resources to hire. Well, luckily, LinkedIn is constantly looking for new ways to make that process easier for you. In fact, they just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. This episode of your favorite locked on podcast is brought to you by the best meal kit service in the game. Home chef. No more having to answer the dreaded question. What are we going to do for dinner tonight? Thanks to home chef and their chef design recipes that are delivered directly to my door, all pre-packaged pre-portioned. They even peel the garlic cloves for you. And each recipe, one of my favorites, black and mahi mahi comes with a full page of easy to read instructions that include customization options and pictures to guide you along the way through the step-by-step process. So you don't have to ask, is that what Charles looks like. I cannot recommend Home Chef enough, especially right now, because for a limited time, Home Chef is giving Locked On listeners 18 free meals, free dessert for life, and of course, free shipping on your first box. If you head to homechef.com slash locked on today, that's homechef.com slash locked on for 18 free meals and free dessert for life. Yes, you heard that right. Homechef.com slash locked on must be an active subscriber to receive free dessert. In the fifth round, pick 142 overall, the Buffalo Bills selected Cedric Van Pran Granger, interior offensive lineman from Georgia. So Cedric Van Pran Granger, 22 years old. He turns 23 in October, is a native of New Orleans, Louisiana, played defensive line and offensive line in high school. He also participated in track where he threw shot put discus and the javelin was a four-star recruit had his choice of schools that he could attend um, made the choice to go play his college ball at Georgia obviously a great choice they've had a lot of success there and he's been right in the middle of it as a 44 game starter if I'm not mistaken that was 44 starts in a row and he was also a two-time team captain for Georgia. Comes in at six foot four, 298 pounds, 31 and three eighths on the arm length. So that's a little bit, that's, you know, you wish you had a little bit more length there, at least another inch or so. And an RAS score of a 762. So very much a sufficient athlete. Had a great career at Georgia. Like I mentioned, 44 starts in a row, two time team captain, only allowed one sack in college in over 1,400 pass-blocking snaps. One sack, and only allowed 34 pressures on over 1,400 pass-blocking snaps, and that's against the SEC. That's the best of the best. This guy didn't give up anything. I'm a big fan of the pick. You watch Cedric Van Pran play. Oh, well, it's Cedric Van Pran Granger been watching him for a number of years and then he added recently added Granger to the end of it so please forgive me if I occasionally forget to say Cedric Van Pran Granger but when you watch him play he just executes he's not a player that you watch on tape and feel like he loses many reps at all really good power and that's surprising because look he measured in at 298 pounds he's not like a massive center but his functional strength, his play strength is real. Really good body control, coordinated football player. You watch offensive linemen, a lot of times they have a tendency to get out of control and they can't sustain blocks because they fold at the waist and they don't have good overall control of their frame. Lacks core strength, right? Not That's not Cedric Van Pran at all. He's a technician. He's a technician with good power. I think he's got a very good understanding of angles in space, like when they ask him to get to the second level or they ask him to pull, he is on schedule. He does well to connect with moving targets. I think it's because he just has a natural understanding of angles and he's terrific in pass protection. I mean, I I just told you, he only gave up one sack and over 1,400 pass blocking snaps, only 34 pressures. He's tough to get by. And that comes from 
being a technician, having good pop in his hands to kind of get that initial stun and jolt on the defensive lineman that rush against him, and he just gets it done. High effort player, always competing through the whistle. He's he's just a he's a really fun football player to watch. When it comes to growth areas for Cedric Van Pran Granger, you just wish he had a little bit more mass, right? You wish he has a little bit more length, a little bit more athleticism. Kind of just comes a little bit behold, below the thresholds in terms of length, mass, and athleticism. And that impacts his margin for error, right? Like you talk about recoverability and what do you need to tap into to recover if you kind of fall behind on a rep? Well, you need mass and athleticism and length. Those are just not areas where he firmly checks the boxes. And in fact, he comes a tick below your desired threshold. So that's definitely something to be mindful of. He's also a player that needs to prove his versatility. He only played center at Georgia. And so, like, if you're a center only, like, just talking about draft valuation, if you're a center only that lacks mass, length, and athleticism, that's going to push you down the board, even if you were an outstanding player like he was at Georgia. So those are just kind of the knocks on the evaluation overall. But you get back to his football, and he's really, really good. I can tell you that Aaron Cromer does believe that he can play center and guard. So while he needs to prove his versatility, the Buffalo Bills do see him as a player that can play center or guard, which is going to be important for him. So what's my general feeling about this selection? This is probably my favorite pick of the draft for the Bills. I'm excited about Cole Bishop, and I, I'm excited about Dwayne Carter, and I, I'm intrigued to see how they get it going with Keon Coleman and, and all the the upside that exists there for his relationship with Josh Allen and, and the opportunity that exists for the passing game. But this is kind of like the Khalil Shakir pick for me a few years ago where I was kind of raving about it. Feel similarly about this one. If Cedric Van Pran Granger ends up starting in the relatively near future, that wouldn't surprise me in the least. And to me, it's just a very logical pick with the with the interior offensive line transition that the Bills are undertaking right now, right? Mitch Morse cut, Ryan Van Bates, Ryan Van Bates. Look at me. I'm I'm all over the place. Uh Ryan Bates is been traded. You're moving Connor McGovern from left guard to center. David Edwards, who was your utility blocker, is now your left guard. It's nice to have another guy here in the mix that you feel good about. Now, the Bills signed Will Clapp, who I think is a baseline level reserve. They have Alec Anderson, who seems to be on a good path as a developmental offensive lineman. Cedric Van Pran Granger comes into this situation to me right now with more appeal than either one of those players. So I think you upgrade your depth right now, but I'm not sleeping on a path for him starting for the team as a fifth round pick. So I know that feels a little bit bold, but I know the player I watched at Georgia and I just feel really good about him with Aaron Cromer and the opportunity that's right in front of him. So I know that there's a lot of understanding and messaging that Connor McGovern's kind of like your your plan at center, but he hasn't really done that with a sustained amount of time in the NFL. Deion Dawkins said, look, I've never had the same left guard next to me year over year, and right now you've made a choice to disrupt that. Your path to that not being necessary is, well, can Cedric Van Pran Granger be your center? Maybe not this year, maybe next year. I just definitely see that type of path for him. Very excited about this selection. All right, folks, on the other side of it, I want to talk about Edifuan Ulafoshio. I know you guys didn't think I was going to pronounce that correctly. Well, joke's on you. Uh, he was in my region at a, my previous job, so I'm well acquainted with him and the Washington program. So we're going to break him down here for you on the other side of it. So be sure to stick with me. I've been told that I'm a competitive person. Do you think that's true? Well, yeah, it's absolutely true. We all have a competitive side, and my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times, 
It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly, but now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people from all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or Google Play. All right, folks. Fifth round, pick 160 overall. The Buffalo Bills select Edifuan Ulafoscio. 24 years old. He just turned 24 in January. He's a native of Anchorage, Alaska. Played running back and linebacker in high school. And then during his sophomore year of high school, his family moved from Alaska to Las Vegas. Could there be a could there be a bigger shift, right, than Alaska to Las Vegas? And when he went to Las Vegas, he played for Bishop Gorman High School, one of the powerhouses in the country when it comes to high school football. Was a two-star recruit and didn't have a whole lot of opportunity coming out of high school. He actually had two scholarship offers, one from Northern Arizona, one from Robert Morris. He turned those down so that he could walk on at Washington, obviously a big Power 5 school, played in the national championship this past season. For his career at Washington, 46 games, 27 starts, is absolutely coming off his best season in 2023, where he racked up 94 tackles, eight tackles for loss, three sacks, a forced fumble, four pass breakups, and an interception. Now, he did have a couple of seasons that were impacted by injuries. In 2021, he missed the last six games with a torn bicep, and then he winds up tearing his ACL in January of 2022 that sidelined him for almost all of that season, but he came back healthy this past year and had a good year. Six foot in some change, 236 pounds, 32 and seven eighths on the arm length. He's a big time athlete, ran four, five, six in the 40, 39 and a half inch vertical jump, nine, six, seven RAS score. Again, a perfect RAS score is a 10. I like Eula Foscio a lot. He's a good football player. Uh, very instinctive. He hunts the football with intent. He flies around the field with urgency. He's he's not hard to find when you watch Washington play defense. Very good tackler. Rarely misses or comes up empty. Has good tackling fundamentals. Aims low, wraps up, drives his feet through the ball carrier. I think he's a very good processor, a nose for the football when playing downhill. Very good athlete, springy athlete, good coverage awareness. Sound zone drop defender, but he also has the movement skills necessary to mirror and match in man coverage against running backs and tight ends. I think he's got the that appeal to be a matchup linebacker. We know that's what the Bills want, right? Matchup linebackers. They don't want your downhill thumpers, right? Matchup guys, Terrell Bernard, Matt Milano, Dorian Williams. They have a type here. They told us that. He fits this to a T. He can run, cover, and hold his own in space. And you love the, the story here, right? Like, begins his career as a walk-on, he becomes a scholarship athlete, and then, you know, a big-time leader within the program. When it comes to concerns with Eula Foscio, it's contact balance, not really a guy that's going to really navigate through traffic well. He's good at slipping blocks and getting around blocks, but if he has to take on and deconstruct the block, that's not going to be his game. Uh, does also have, you know, two major injuries that cost him a lot of time. He's a little bit of an older prospect. And I guess if you were kind of digging for other concerns, is this is a very athletic player that's good in coverage. Maybe you wish that he had a little bit more ball production to show for um, that type of profile uh, uh, as a player. So my general feelings on this pick, I, I like this pick a lot. Um, the Bills needed numbers at linebacker. I kind of talked about that at some point. Uh, this past week, maybe in my final conversation leading up to the draft, where the Bills only had five linebackers under contract. They'll probably roster at least five, maybe six. 
So you you were really thin on numbers here. You still need to add a bunch more linebackers through undrafted free agency to get through you know camp preseason all that type of stuff. But I think this is this is a rock solid pick. I mean, really good tape, really clean projection to this scheme. I think he should be an impact special teamer, and that matters a ton right now based on the new kickoff reel. So I just see a very very logical pick and path and fit for this football team. And I think that's one of my overarching themes in the entire draft that the Bills put together. Maybe you don't love the exact players that they picked, but you can certainly look at the players that they picked and understand the path to a role and how they fit within this within this roster. So that's something that I, I can definitely enjoy about what Brandon Bean assembled with this draft class. All right, folks, so there you have it. Broke down the Bills' first three picks on day three. Ray Davis, the running back, Kentucky. Cedric Van Pran Granger, the interior offensive lineman. And Edifuan Ulafoshio, the linebacker out of Washington. And it's available right now for you. I'm going to get to the other picks that the Bills made, the other day three picks. Javon Solomon, Tylen Grable, Daquan Hardy, and Travis Clayton in that episode. So part two is coming up. Don't miss it. Make sure that you're subscribed. Would love it. If you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast, have a great rest of your day. Go Bills, and I look forward to catching up with you again real soon.